Hi, welcome to Sync, the bi-weekly news show where we give you a TLDR, no BS recap of what's been going on in the gaming industry for May 23rd through the 26th. My name's Mikey Dude, and let's get episode 24 underway. Next, Saints Row title quietly delayed. According to previous earning reports from Embracer Group and THQ Nordic gave some insights surrounding the upcoming entry in the Saints Row franchise. The game, which previously had a release window within 2020, has been moved to the next fiscal year of 2021. The report also noted that starting in the 2021 fiscal year, Embracer Group will be releasing one AAA title every year. Some big promises and we hope to see some announcements soon. Intel acquires Rivet Networks. This week, hardware and chip manufacturer Intel acquired one of gaming's best secrets, Rivet Networks, the makers of the killer gaming network card specifically built for low latency in modern day games. Previously, Rivet had deals with Dell and Asus to supply network cards for Alienware and Republic of Gamers line of laptops and desktops. Hopefully, this acquisition leads to the hardware being incorporated into Intel's current line of network cards and provide a benefit to Intel's slipping lead. Footage from cancelled Half-Life title surfacing On Twitter, Danny O'Dwyer's no-clip documentary series has begun teasing their new project on Arkane Studios, and as a part of that teasing, they have revealed some footage of Arkane's Half-Life project, which was always known to take place entirely in Ravenholm, the spooky location from Half-Life 2. It can certainly be assumed we will learn more about the history and development of this project inside of the no-clip documentary, so that will be definitely something to tune into, as they are great documentary filmmakers in the field of video games. One thing we know of the title is that it was planned to be Half-Life Life 2 Episode 4, but of course, Episode 3 never saw the light of day. EVE Online Players Faced with Alien Invasion and All Out War some news out of EVE Online this week as a year-long alien invasion is finally coming to a head as some new leaks and information released by CCP, the parent company of EVE. Notable streamer Astarothy released an image of some upcoming text mentioning Invasion Chapter 3. Capsulars will have important decisions to make as they choose between sides. The invading Triglavians are an alien race that appeared in New Eden sometime last year and have been studying EVE pilots offering them a chance to prove themselves or risk failing and swift death. More will be released in the coming days as CCP readies the June release, so check back for more updates. Original Xbox Live revived through Project Insignia Great news this week for owners of the original Xbox as a quiet fan project has brought back the original Xbox Live network. Project Insignia is a full replacement for the Xbox Live service, allowing these consoles to play games without the use of the current workaround of X-Link Kai, a service that uses a networking tunnel and doesn't provide any of the Xbox Live specific features like leaderboards, friend lists, or some network specific features within games like Project Gotham Racing. While this isn't the biggest news out there, it's certainly a marvel to see something deemed dead in the ground be reverse engineered and brought back for the masses. No release date yet, but with how close the project is to completion, it shouldn't be too much longer. Civilization 6 is Epic's new free game. Following their insane acquisition of Grand Theft Auto V as a free title, Epic has announced that the next free game they will offer us is Sid Meier's Civilization VI. There are no strings attached here. Simply add the game to your library and it's yours forever. You don't even have to download it within the time frame of availability. For the price of free, any game is a good deal, so we highly recommend heading over to Fortnite land to at least grab the game if you ever want to play it. Last of Us Part 2 Gameplay Preview Teased Sony announced in a blog post today that this Wednesday's State of Play will be a treat for fans of The Last of Us with a full showcase of gameplay. The showcase will start at 1pm Pacific and will contain a 20 minute deep dive into the gameplay and mechanics of this highly anticipated title. Roughly 20 to 30 minutes of content is planned with 8 minutes dedicated to never before seen footage from Naughty Dog's newest title. Make sure to tune into Sony's State of Play over on Twitch or YouTube Wednesday and we here at Sync will be watching with you. Nintendo slash Pokemon source code leaks. Another week, another set of Pokemon and Nintendo source code leaks. While last week held the Generation 3 source code for Ruby, Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald, this week came with both the full source code for Pokemon Diamond, which seemed more than enough to keep dedicated programmers busy until later that same day. The full 3DS boot ROM and system code were leaked from 2014. While both of these are proficient leaks, the main benefit of Pokemon Diamond is seeing counterfeit reproduction cards flood the market. While the 3DS leak doesn't hold much new information, the boot ROM code will certainly provide some some help to developers working on homebrew. Magic Leap raises $350 million, cancels layoffs. 
Despite troubles recently, including lacking sales and the stresses most luxury product companies with razor thin margins no matter the market are experiencing right now, augmented reality company Magic Leap has announced that they have gathered another round of funding to the tune of $350 million from both new and existing investors. This allows company CEO Roni Abovitz to cancel the 1,000 layoffs he instituted last month, also with a promise of no more layoffs being planned. This comes after the $2 billion the company has already raised, of course. Fortnite to host Christopher Nolan film screening. Hot off the heels of the new trailer for his latest film, Tenet, premiering inside of Fortnite, Christopher Nolan has announced that he will bring one of his films to the game for a free screening. No word on that title that will be chosen, but considering the intensity slash general narrative complexity of some of his films, a good choice could be Batman Begins. Considering the streak Epic has been on with adding events of this variety to the game, this sort of partnership makes sense. It is funny, on the other hand, to see Christopher Nolan, long the defender of the theatrical experience, to be showing and promoting films of his inside of a video game. IGN teases Summer of Gaming announcement. IGN announced on Twitter Monday morning that the full schedule and lineup for their upcoming Summer of Gaming will be released Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern. This major event is set to be the first major replacement of E3 following its cancellation earlier this year due to the COVID-19 crisis. The tweet teased, quote, news, impressions, and gameplay from the likes of EA, CD Projekt Red, 2K, and many more. We here at Sync will be watching eagerly to bring you the scoop Friday after all the upcoming announcements. Pac-Man comes to Twitch. Amazon Games and Bandai Namco have teamed up to bring us Pac-Man Studio Live, a new Pac-Man title playable for free through Twitch. The game was created to honor the 40th birthday of everyone's favorite yellow pizza missing a slice. It has multiple modes, including a maze creation mode, a mode to play with others' creations, as well as classic mode, the original Pac-Man experience from the 1980s, minus Quarters and Billy Mitchell. Essentially, we've got Pac-Man's answer to Mario Maker, plus the original game, all free on Twitch. Sounds great to us. Massive Sims 4 update coming June 2nd. A massive free update for The Sims 4 is due out next week, June 2nd, and we already got a sneak peek from Sims Community in partnership with EA. To start off the new update, it will feature Firefighters and Repo Men, a previous staple of the series that have yet to be included in the newest entry. Then, an updated inventory screen along with free window and door replacement, two massive quality of life changes desperately needed. While the last feature we are aware of at this time is a revamped bills and utility system to hopefully drive a more realistic feel. With Sims 4 being one of the most piecemeal titles, it has slowly grown to be a complete game enriched by community feedback. The new update releases on June 2nd, a few days before the next expansion pack entitled Eco Lifestyle. Halo 3 PC public flighting to begin in June. The flighting process, or rather the public beta testing, of Halo 3 on PC will commence in the second half of June, according to a new update from the team at 343 Industries. Some people under NDA are already playing the game, but public testing will open up soon. If you're interested in helping test the game before release, head on down to Halo Waypoint and fill out your insider profile to be possibly selected for a future flight. In other Halo on PC news, that infamous projectile glitch from Halo 2 has been rectified thanks to the hard work of the team. Scott Pilgrim Game May Return just recently, director Edgar Wright and the original comic creator Brian Lee O'Malley took part in a screening digitally of the film of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, a video game influenced film from 2010. For the 10th anniversary, a 4K restoration has been undertaken, and along with all this Scott Pilgrim hype, O'Malley wrote on Twitter about how they should bring back the Scott Pilgrim game, and Ubisoft, developers of the title, responded with a thinking emoji. The Scott Pilgrim game was released alongside the film, however, just four years later, the game was delisted, possibly due to licensing issues either with the property or the music for the game. Hopefully Ubisoft can work their necromancy and bring back the fan favorite beat em up. Valve launches Dota 2 Battle Pass. Dota 2's upcoming events may be postponed, but that hasn't stopped the fan hype around the upcoming International and its paired Battle Pass. Each year, the Battle Pass provides fans with in-game achievements, special game modes, prizes, and ways to level up the pass for even more rewards. This year is no different as the newest feature, Guilds, will allow players to group up and earn points to contribute to different groups. Anyone can join a guild, but only those with a Battle Pass can create them. Then this summer, a special event is teased, bringing back the Horde mode-like activity known as the Labyrinth, tasking players with clearing it without dying and in small groups with the goal of even more rewards. So much more was announced, so head on over to the link down below to learn more or boot up your Dota 2 client. Risk of Rain 2 aiming to hit version 1.0 by August. 
Developer Hopu Games has announced that Risk of Rain 2 will leave early access and hit version 1.0 by August. With that patch, the game will receive numerous improvements such as a dedicated server browser, a final stage and boss, a new playable character, and new items and equipment. This update will not make it to consoles until the fall most likely, as they haven't even gotten to where the game is with the latest update on PC just yet. Media Molecule begins testing Dreams VR. European players of Dreams are in for a special surprise as they can apply to be a tester for Media Molecule for an upcoming virtual reality version of the game. You have to be pre-approved and then you'll spend two weeks with the game and report back to the studio on your experience. You'll earn 200 euros for your trouble or lack thereof possibly. This also checks off one of the big goals the developers have for Dreams, the other being the creation of multiplayer titles in the game. All right, everyone, that's Sync for May 23rd through the 26th. If you haven't subscribed yet, but you'd like to, you know where that button is. Lastly, let us know what games you've been playing down in the comments. And once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next episode here at Sync.